So of the UN's Sustainable Development Goals, number 15 is concerned with land management, the protection, restoration and promotion of the sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems, sustainable management of our forests, reversing land degradation and halting biodiversity loss. So how are we doing? Well, let's look at the first of the key targets, which is to overturn deforestation and implement sustainable management and even restore degraded forests. Well, every year, 13 million hectares of forests are still lost. That's the size of Greece, and that's every year. But when you think of devastating deforestation, you probably think of the Amazon, perhaps Borneo or even the Congo. Did you realise that Australia is ranked in the top 10 of the world's major deforestation fronts? In fact, Australia is the only nation in the developed world to make the World Wildlife Fund's global list of deforestation hotspots. This is particularly localised to Eastern Australia and it's accelerating. I'm Tracy Rogers and I'm a Professor of Ecology. I'm at UNSW in the School of Biological Earth and Environmental Sciences. So where is this deforestation happening? Predominantly in Queensland. Yet Queensland's intense and episodic rainfall and the inherent instability of many of their soils means that those cleared lands are then prone to erosion. This leads us to a second key target, which was to restore degraded land. Yet our large scale clearing is creating more degraded land. This then impacts our biodiversity which leads us to our third target, which is to halt the loss of biodiversity and to protect and prevent the extinction of threatened species. So how have we done? Again, here, not great. In Australia, 7.7 .7 million hectares of threatened species habitat has been cleared or destroyed. And this is since environmental protection and biodiversity conservation legislation was enacted. Yet of this area, most, 93% was neither assessed nor approved. In fact, ecologists regard this land clearing and land use changes as the primary threat to Australia's biodiversity, particularly in Queensland, where land clearing to create pasture is the greatest pressure on threatened flora and fauna. Among the top 10 species to lose the most area were the red goshawk, the ghost bat and the koala losing 3 million, 2.9 million and 1 million hectares respectively. Well, maybe this isn't such an issue. Well, Australia is already the world leader in modern day extinctions. Yep, a hundred endemic Australian species living in 1788 are now extinct. This represents about six to 10% of the world's extinctions since 1500. Extinctions are still happening today. We lost three species this last decade. Without a fundamental change in how environmental law is written, used and enforced, this crisis is only going to get worse. So why are we clearing so much of our native forests, which leads to land degradation and then this extinction wave? We're clearing for a variety of reasons, but the main culprit is farming and grazing. Livestock such as cattle and sheep need lots of space to graze, and often that grazing land used to be covered with native forests. Cattle and sheep also need lots of water so that meat production like our beef and lamb and even more so for dairy products like milk and cheese are particularly inefficient to produce. But what can we do, especially those of us who live in cities and have little direct interaction with the land? Actually, we can do quite a lot. When you buy meat, Go to your local butcher rather than a big supermarket chain. Find out from your butcher the source and impact of the food you eat, including its packaging, fuel and transport. Even better, shift to a plant-based diet. Eat less meat and dairy, or none at all. This will make an enormous difference. Reducing our meat consumption would free up millions of square kilometres of land. Land that would regrow as natural forests, re-establishing natural habitats to preserve biodiversity halting and even overturning species extinction. So reducing the amount of meat we eat will even improve our health. Only about 25% of the world regularly eats meat. And in countries such as here in Australia and in the US, we eat lots of meat. So that us as consumers and the landowners, the farmers and pastoralists as growers 
Together we hold the power to make this positive shift. Did you know that farming contributes a third of the world's greenhouse gases? So that when we think about solving climate change and what our governments can do, we need to include thinking about agriculture. In fact, our land use practices of deforestation for our agricultural needs threaten our ability to limit the global temperature increase to 1.5 degrees Celsius. And that's our goal from the 2015 Paris Climate Agreement. But if we shift towards a plant-based diet and reduce, or if you can, eliminate our meat consumption, we boost significantly the plant's ability to fight climate change. We would reduce carbon emissions by up to 8 gigatons annually by 2050. But landowners need our support to transition their livelihoods from feeding us meat to feeding us plant products. Or there needs to be real value in using their land to capture carbon. We need to push our governments to provide landowners with the support they need to make this transition. Going vegan is the single biggest thing I can do to reverse deforestation, preserve biodiversity, stop species loss, halt climate change, and at the same time feed the world. Although land clearing for agriculture is part of the problem, it's also a critical part of the solution. Our sustainable actions mean that we are a critical part of the solution. There's enormous power in our purchasing choices.